Good afternoon, everyone. We've not started yet. We'll give it another 30 seconds. But happy Friday to everyone. We're looking forward to speaking with you this afternoon. Okay, well, as I said, good afternoon and welcome to the webinar today. And we're gonna be talking about the importance of objective data for screening within rehabilitation. I'm Andy Thomas, I'm director at Physiquip and I personally have been working with BTE for nearly 14 years now. So that's a long time, but we're actually joined by someone who's been with them a lot longer than that. So I'll introduce John later on. But today we're gonna to be talking through from a, uh, a user who's been using the system for around eight years. So Heather Flight is a sports therapist and she's been using the Primus within her practice, which is in Zimbabwe, but she's now working in London. So we're really excited to share the way that she's been using the system. Um, and I love how passionate she is about the, uh, about the device and, and how she's, she's integrated it clinically, but also used it from a revenue generation. So once we've gone through her presentation, we'll have a question and answer session. We've already had some pre-submitted questions any of you who have joined would like to ask anything, we'd recommend putting those in the Q&A session at the bottom. And without further ado, I will pass over to Heather and we can go straight into it. Great, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, obviously I'm coming from um, quite a long-term um, use of the Primus and finding ways that I could functionally use it and obviously having the the, the, the luxury of having a Primus in my clinic um, um, for revenue generation rather than in institutional um, specific treatments. So I've, I've been able to play around and bend protocols and what, I, what it actually came down to being a sports therapist um, often because I, I certainly got the patient or the, the post phase of rehabilitation um, I, I always needed quantitative data because I had patients uh, re-injuring, reoccurring, and I often found there was a gap between physiotherapy and where I was supposed to take over. And, and I often found if I could find, a, a, you know, this was going back 10 years, if there was only a piece of equipment that could create a baseline, could create objective data so the physios could understand rather than just take my opinion, um, that would be the ultimate. And that led me on, 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 a wild goose chase and a lot of risks later to, to invest in the Primus RS, which has been obviously the keystone and the pillar to communicating rehabilitation. So for me, it's all about evidence-based practice and using numbers really to um, quantify where are we at, rather than just using the traditional method the way we were taught at, at universities, um, what is the grading, what is the estimate, what does it look like? I mean, the visual eye takes an amount, but the great thing with the Primus RS or having it in my clinic has been, <laughs> it's, it's science. So putting a number to performance immediately allows you to do objective integrated um, decision-making based on, on training with numbers, simply putting it. And the way I used it is, rather than focusing on what the injury is, and I always use the analogy of, of Primus as a, um, a wheel balancing machine. Physios jobs tend to be about changing the wheel of, of the car per se, <laughs> looking at, at, at why the tire has gone flat on a vehicle, look at, is the same as a knee, I, I use that analogy, um, probably get shot down for that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's, it's very similar and, and the way I, I used my screening tool as a screening is to look at the loading, what, what loads are going through the pelvis in the prime movers and affecting the joints above and below. And that's really possibly what I've focused my journey on in rehab and working very closely with physiotherapists to be able to start above the injury, below the injury and work very closely in a very integrated way with physiotherapists. Um, obviously looking at while I do the job of neutral pelvis, they're doing the job of, of um, you know, controlling the injury and the reoccurring thereof. So I'm just going to go into really where my experience and how I've used the Primus um, and, and sort of as a keystone of my practice in the last six years. 
So obviously, why would we want to, why we, sorry, why using a screening tool in a serving baseline is important. And as I said, and I mentioned, it's a pro, you know, the, the definition is it's a process of establishing a starting point of any me measure from which we can imp impact uh, in movement. And basically, if we can figure out how do we measure change and how do we calculate it? So we, it's very, very number oriented in terms of how we prescribe bespoke exercises or prescription of exercises. So that's just a rough overview. It's, you know, it's used to gauge how effective an improvement or changes initiative is. Human movement and body's ability to use motion to carry out daily functions is vital for normative function. Activities combine both pur purposeful and reflex movement behavior. And obviously, using a screening tool is important to establish baselines to motivate clients and reflect practitioners progress this ultimately has been sort of the biggest one of the biggest reasons for me is how do i motivate clients to go in to do their exercises because ultimately you're telling them but many people don't end up doing them and what i believe what what i established in the early days if i could create a number and said okay this week we've got to get from a to b suddenly there was buy-in and, and quantifying the description of them trying to achieve better results is really what, what, what enhanced my rehab to the point that I can pretty much with the primus in such sessions build muscle up to 80% and almost, almost guarantee that there's going to be change. So um, factors that we need to consider to make effective screening and accurate have to be evidence-based and number-based. Um, we also need to look at different protocols and different mythologies. Obviously, there's so many disciplines and everybody wants to stay in their lane. And certainly with, with, with the, what I found in the UK, it's very hard to go between disciplines, whereas the States and Africa tend to be a little bit more open-minded to multidisciplinary approaches and where that crossover of integration happens. And I think having, particularly where already in London in the last few years, I've seen there's much more integration in clinics where you're working with biokineticists, you know, integrated sports um, and, and um, disciplines, people are open to having more than one person in the practice and, and having a primus in the clinic. I had clinic with over certainly two, uh, a clinical um, uh, team and a lifestyle team. So to be able to, and I worked within multiple uh, factors from stroke rehabilitation all the way through to high performance athletes. Um, and the one key that allowed everybody to talk was the numbers on the primus because it all meant something and it was neutral. So having one in practice, particularly if in a multidiscipline situation, allows different departments within hospitals, different departments within teams. So certainly, I mean, what I figured out here is you could have a primus in a hospital where the stroke, people have strokes, but it's only been used for hand therapy and certainly not in any orthopedic. So the versatility of having one over multiple disciplines makes it a huge, huge um, benefit. And obviously that also allows us to look at movement patterns away from, from you know, the, the sport, the, the injury or what's actually happen, happening. <clears throat> so... Obviously, for me, using the primus and screening has been a lot on posture. What is the load doing to influence injury that's, that's happened? And often screening that for me has been really looking at using the, uh, the primus to look at whole, what, what is actually happening when whole movement is carried out. And, um, and um, you know, what patterns are, are being considered, what, which, which way are the body, the, is the body movement moving, what is the force closure on the joints between the muscles, all of those effects, like how the rehabilitation of, say, you know, a knee injury actually is ca carried out. And really, um, for me, in order to bridge the gap of, like, functional activities or testing, it's really important to establish what are quality of movement standards of measurement um, you know, moving, movement screening and movement assessment becomes really, really important to quantify over multiple disciplines and certainly to the baseline of a patient. Um, I, I have included, and I'm by no means affiliated to, to BTE, I, I'm completely independent, but what I've realized in the passion, in my passion of owning a primus is, is very few people understand it. I mean, I've been asked, is it a, you know, how does it work? What does it do? And 
And then it's quite amazing how many people look at the primers and are completely overwhelmed, but it actually it's such a practical, simple tool and can, it is so versatile. So I, um, for the sake of the recording of this, which we might not have time to go into today, I have included probably one of the better, best videos from BTE that encompasses actually how the Primus RS is used and what the overall um, ability of it is. So I'm just gonna skip through this little video because it is, it is probably one of the better ones which, which you can find on, on the BTE website, um, on YouTube, and certainly they have a series What is the goal of physical rehabilitation? So I'm gonna skip through this, but so. just, Basically, what it is to, to, to train any patient or athlete and to explain all the versatility of it. It generates so, measurable outcomes. It enhances the success of the modern orthopedic hospital, physiotherapy clinic, occupational therapy practice, and athletic training facility. So it basically covers, it can be used, as I said, in multidiscipline fractions and really how, how versatile it is, is absolutely endless from high performance, functional um, um, movement. So you can make it, you can bulk, it, it, it has a pro package unit that can do everything from cricket to tennis, to golf, to rugby functionally, which tends to come and came in for me for more end range functions. Um, it, it, it has a lot of data analysis that you can do, which seems very confusing in the, in the beginning, but um, it, it, it's very versatile in actually in what it can do. And having it in, a, in the clinic really allows everybody to, to have a baseline starting point to talk from. But this video is definitely worth looking at and actually realizing it's not that hard to use and literally that whole machine can fit through a doorway it doesn't need a lot of space and it's equivalent of having a whole gym in literally a four meter room it doesn't take a lot of space it's, it's pretty incredible um how how i i have personally used it in my clinic and how i i really worked with my physiotherapist is i i used it fundamentally um as a in screening the prime movers of, of the hip, because I've often felt if, if there was any movement dysfunction or anything that fell out of neutral with the pelvis, if I didn't have that significantly stable, then the reoccurring of the injuries actually came about quite a lot. Um, what makes this, this, this really great tool for integrating with physiotherapy, I'll point out here is the, the CPM action, continuous pa passive movement that I was able to do um, proprioceptive work a lot in, in rehabilitation and really brain train the injury from very, very early on and pre-weight pre bearing. And that's certainly in, in um, the case history you're gonna see just now um, with one of my clients, made a huge, huge impact um, in, in, in the versatility of this machine that functionally you can continue continuous passive movement and proprioception right the way through the rehabilitation phase. I obviously combined it with um, quantifying a core measure to, 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 to motivate um, core testing, postural, functional movements, keep screening, and obviously looking at all their baselines on their lifestyle and disease management, which I integrated all into sort of one package in my assessment. Um, the basic way I used it initially, because you can go in, I mean, I had many physios saying, I just want the quad hamstring ratios measured. But often what I found is that a knee injury on, on you know, an adductor strain or a knee always came down to what are the quads and, and the pelvis doing. So I always used it in a screening of, of what is the, the prime movers doing. And I um, basically it was the greatest tool in, in integrating technology and bridging this gap for my, my patient outcomes. I'm just gonna talk you roughly through how I did my normally six sessions. I would do a two hour um, testing, which would, which would involve really looking at the four prime mover groups on the primus. Um, in this case, this was an Olympic athlete that um, I test an, uh, an inventor who was very set on um, um, training, um, um, very set on training 
in, in her discipline, but not necessarily in the gym and had an incredibly deficit core. So what I was able to do is show her very isolated non weight bearing test. I'll just play this video of her doing an endurance test. And then I simulated what would be happening on a horse when her lower limb was under load, put her on a ball so she could actually see the fallout of her core. And that linked in obviously to a core test to show her that no matter how strong her legs were on the horse, it, ha it was a lot to do with, with movement dysfunction. So I'm just gonna, normally this is what I would do in session one, and I'll test the quads, hamstrings, glute med, glute mask, screen all four. This is a sample of the quad being tested. <laughs> So basically I would isolate the, the, the muscle groups, take a non-weight weight bearing, look at strength, power, endurance, left to right, front to back, and then look at which muscle groups had deficits. And then I would spend the next six, six sessions training deficits. So I would term it deficit training because I could often get really good strength in the quads, but an endurance deficit on say the right the right quad, but a very weak um, left glute med in, in strength. So I'd often find training the antagonists of, of the chain, looking at stabilizing all the deficits and really getting that, those numbers right. So I would test and only train the deficits in the first six sessions, which would allow me to get neutral loading. But in, in, in an assessment for buy-in in the first session, I would always look at the functionality of the sport and show her. So this is her doing a, a functional test um, for being on a horse and showing what actually happens when a lower limb fatigues on the horse, what happens to her upper body. <laughs> So you can significantly see the performance or outcome of that prime mover on the lower limb on the horse is certainly affected by the movement pattern on the top. So it, it allowed me to actually show her that how you know the deficits are contributing to the overall, um, the overall or pattern. Then from there, I would put the results of that into a very simple up. The BTE um, reporting can come across to, to the patients quite technical. So I would just simplify everything down into numbers. I'm just gonna show you the report of, of what a, a rough um, screening uh, report um, actually looked like from the clinic. Um, so what we would actually do is put it into our own interpretation and into our own graphs. So I'm, I would make it really, really simple. So you can actually see, this is quite a great reflection of um, strength, power, endurance, where the numbers come in. So I just would color code it into the green. So you could actually see in the hat, although she had significant green neutral quads, the power popped up what I would term a deficit within power. So her strength and endurance were really good, but there was a significant power deficit. And normally when you've got a neutral green quad hammy um, ratio, there would always be something that would pop up into the, um, with, 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 the with the glutes. So glute me became quite a significant thing where if there was a quad hamstring performance, it would be hugely reflected and in this case, you can see there was almost a 200% um, percent deficit in endurance. So 90% of the time, to get more performance out of the lower limb, I would quantify, close those deficits, and, and, and then track them as I went in through, in, into the sessions. And the great thing about the primus is, is, is it's not only the testing, but it's the training. And many people I think that own the primus don't realize the power of actually using the, 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 the primus within training, not just the testing. So that's roughly how I used to put the interpretation, which made it a lot easier for the team to interact. I did use bar graphs as well in my reporting, which did, did help, but I think to the patient and the person understanding who, who really needed to do the work, I found the, the interpretation of color coding really possibly the, the better way to, to explain it or, or the way it went out. 
um, to the patient a lot quicker. So um, th th that would normally be my first session where I test and screen core. And then the progressive treatment going into the training, I try and always focus the first sessions on non-weight bearing for the first two to four sessions where I would now start building out those glutes. I'd use the primus functionally to do negative loading on bridging and pelvis. Um, in, in the sample that I've got here um, um, of, of a patient who actually does his, talks about his patient journey, he had an arthritic ankle and was an extreme um, passionate uh, windsurfer and golfer and had a, a significant arthritic change. I'll show you the MRI. Um, you're able to start working proprioceptively. So we were able to offload, um, start offloading and building the, the joint off it, um, pressure off the joint quite sig quite significantly um, in the early in the early stages. What makes it really really different um, as well with the primus with is that I've, I've put a screenshot of it here. But you have um, on the plantar dorsiflexion, say, for example, you can set targets, you can give them very incentivized um, targets on almost quantifiable ways to um, strengthen, work on proprioception, and getting real good control of that, of the joint, as well as the strength. Um, so that's really what I'd focus my uh, second to fourth session on just depending on. And then the fourth to seventh, seventh sessions, I would start looking at sort of functional loading. So here in this arthritic client, I started to get into control and use a mixture between the continuous passive session and then start getting the primus to pull, um, pull weight around so I could get him to put in 50% load, 60% load, 70% load and start doing proprioceptive tasks with them. This is just a short video. Of the The great thing about this is, particularly with the rehabilitation, is you never overload the client. You always go on what the capabilities are. So you're using, they do the action, and then that determines the, the loading for that session. So some sessions, obviously, you know, three forward, one back, you never overload or, or, or are guessing. The primus always creates the baseline of that training session. And then towards the end of sort of six to seven sessions, I norm, depending on how the patient's progress, progress, progressing, I um, um, look at, um, um, sorry, let me go back here. I, I, I sort of look into a before and, and after assessment, retest it, and then look into sort of um, objective ways of what they actually have achieved before and after. So you can see um, in this case, um, knee extension, knee flexion, hip abduction, hip extension. I always use four muscle groups and you could normally pick up the red, like in this case, his hip abduction had the 254% deficit. After six sessions, we actually got him pretty much all, all, all balanced down to a 7% in, in actually six sessions with this patient. So, um, that we, we've got, um, we've basically got uh, a significant, and, and, and that was a standard by actually correcting that the loading on his back, all, all of that actually be, be, becomes quite significant because they're able to see where we started on the first session to where we are in the sixth session. Um, this is the patient I've just shown you in the in the video. This is actually his. Um, I'm going to have to flick through them again just to get back to where we were. Sorry, um, I. Um, um, where we started sort of on the 18th of June with, with, with a significant um, arthritic ankle. Um, there's the MRI with an orthotic. Um, you can actually see what his ankle looked like. He, he wore a brace all the time to play golf. Um, the orthopedic had actually mentioned that his best options if he wanted to be active was the fusion. Um, 
um, he, he, he was very disheartened and he had tried many, many options, but I don't think they got the loading or the proprioception right in previous ones. And you can actually see if I just show you the eversion, we able to, were to quantify, you know, the 60% the, the, um, deficit on the 18th of June down to 12. Um, and I was really happy to say, you won't believe me, but, but a month ago he went from um, being really um, insecure going upstairs to actually doing a water ski holiday in Spain and, and actually water skied for the first time in six years on that specific ankle just by controlling and, and getting his weight bearing and, and, and movement correct. Um, I'm going to play you a short video from him um, or sort of a, a, patient, a patient testimony from him on Good his journey. Uh, yeah. no over about five months ago and started using the Prandus program and um, I've got arthritis in my right ankle and um, have been on a downward trajectory with it for about well, I'd say at least seven or eight years and I used to play a lot of squash and a lot of different sports. The goal was really just to try and get back walking a golf course and uh, just a bit, a bit, a bit so more confident in the ankle which uh, was really painful. Um, the Primus program just really found out where I was weak, which was in the glutes and the hamstrings, um, right down the leg and obviously in the ankle itself, and um, finding huge imbalances in the body. And uh, Heather then was working through the Primus program to uh, to rebalance the body. And uh, since yeah, since I've been using the program, my ankle has just stopped going on the downward trajectory and is now on the upward trajectory. Being able to see the numbers every day or every time you use the uh, program and being able to see how your results are improving every day is just transformational in your mindset of how to improve. I just couldn't recommend the whole process. I've been using stem cells treatment on this ankle. I've been using uh, video on it for, for years. This is really for the first time where I've actually found that something that's actually made a significant difference and I'm now really, really uh, hopeful that uh, we'll, we'll be able to get into a position where um, yeah, I've got an any ankle and uh, I'll still down the pillow. So I hope that helps. So just, just to wrap that up, it's, it's, it, it's, the, it's often the numbers that make them motivated to, to buy in. And, um, you know, the core philosophy I've always used is to look at prime movers, look at the movement as functions. Um, I won't go through everything, but just the highlights here, optimal function, control and stabilization. Often stabilization is so overlooked in the rehabilitation process for me. So my focus in those first six sessions is always antagonist. Get the antagonist, sta antagonist stabilizing. And it's unbelievable how much the injuries actually start just um, having less forces going through them rather than just focusing on, on the trauma that's been caused by load. Um, and, and often weight bearing and strength have the focus and aren't integrated with baseline evidence for, for core and, and, and the load going through the forced closure of the joints. You know, traditional program relies a lot on too much, you know, stretching what is tight, strengthening what is weak, and programs often miss the boat on stabilization. And that's really what's been the key to my success. And using the primus in an integrated way and just that whole concept that mike reynolds pushes you know that a chain is as strong as the weakest link it's a ripple effect so the primus really is a practical tool that helps me really explain that um to to sort of to, for patients to look bigger than just the injury but look at the movement patterns the posture and what they're doing in their every, everyday life and obviously particularly with the shoulder with shoulder and upper limb i mean i've treated shoulders <laughs> rotator cuff injuries where i've hardly touched the shoulder just corrected the forces through 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 the body and then and and, and the joint starts to sort itself out because it's not under so much trauma all the time and so often we get caught up in in just treating the injury that you forget to screen you know to screen around around the joint so just really looking at, you know, a reminder around stabilization systems as well as movement systems in rehabilitation and, and finding data that supports it and making your clinical protocols very evidence-based through that. 
um, so, so often, I, I just love this, um, the, the engine is forgotten about and we so focused on performance and outcome and, and how do we get the most functional movement. We actually want to go completely inhibit all the big muscle groups from working and find out what's not holding. Because the minute that load tips, uh, there's the whole pattern overload causes the injury. And in six sessions, you can literally really look at or identify, you know, is it bigger engines or better brakes and often if you pull back and quantify that you can you can it, it, it's remarkable in literally six sessions what you can do so treating really with the primus and you know most what I've noticed here and certainly what we've certainly shifted in Africa is our, our focus on working with physiotherapists very very early and certainly what's great with the primus is in integrating electrotherapy protocols with this, the continuous pa passive movements. So we, we worked a lot in, in, in very early phases with the physios to try and assess the imbalance, which would literally enhance the treatment significantly. Um, that's in essence, pretty much where, where we at um, with, 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 um, sorry, let me get that on with the, with, with, um, what I what I can offer, obviously, this is very um, my experience and um, and what I've learned through through really figuring out what is what is the best way forward, and that's really where I ha have come to the to the U UK recently in the last year, obviously in the COVID pandemic, and had a business structure of really looking at. Um, having one clinic for people to come to because there's not a lot of primuses in the private sector. Um, this has led me on a journey now to look at really partnering with Physiquip and looking at business partner relationships and looking at who's in the field that needs help with access to getting primers. I certainly have the experience and the ability to look at options at putting a primus into your clinics and looking at business partner relationships. So my question is to throw it out there. If there are any clinics that are wanting to look at having a primus in their, in their clinic, um, maybe that's a, a discussion we can take on with Andy now and, and, um, and, and look at moving, moving forward with, with ways we could um, maybe help you get a primus into your, care, into your clinic and certainly um, look at protocols that could help you actually merge what your current protocols are with a very evidence way of testing. Thanks very much, Andy. Heather, thank you very much for that. That was really good. And just to, uh, we were talking about this before we started this webinar, is that I've been working with BT for a long time. And one of the key challenges we've had is that the primers can be very overwhelming because it can do so many things. So having someone like you, Heather, who's, we can help support you in that way, both in terms of the clinical applications, but also how you can make a business out of it. And whether that's in a private clinic, in a sports team, any environment, we're really able to now provide a really good support base for you. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, it's an exciting proposition, I would say. So I'd also like to bring into the conversation. Now, so I say I've been working with BT for a long time. This guy's been working with BT for a long time. So, John Vermette, welcome. Thank you. How long have you been at BT for now? Oh, I've been here about 36 years. Yeah, well, that's, if you ever watch any of the BT training videos, you'll see John there, and he's, he's not aged a day in, in whenever they were they were last made. So it's, uh, it's good to have you on board. So Heather, one of the questions that we had come through firstly was talking about, um, when you mentioned CPM, was that the CPM with the target force? Because I know that's a quite a unique thing that the Primus offers. Just unmute yourself, Heather. There we go. Yeah, that's correct. CPN is continuous passive movement with a target force. That that's great. So I don't I, the the versatility of that tool in rehabilitation in the training sessions is is significant. Um, so yes, that's that's really what I was referring to. Okay, great. And John, from from your perspective in the states and other countries, how does the way that Heather uses it? How does that fit with the way that you see it being used? Heather has some very uh, unique approaches. I do see uh, some of those things being done, but it's a testimony to how creative you can be with the primus. And you know, one of the real advantages um, 
with the primus that you really can't tell from those videos is the fact that it offers eccentric resistance. And there's been plenty of research um, published showing the advantages of muscle training with eccentric loading. And you know many of those things that Heather was showing there with the cable system, it's the eccentrics that's very unique that you can't do other ways. So when somebody pulls against it, the cable is actually pulling back against you. And there's a very nice advantage in that you can be up to 40% stronger eccentrically. And therefore, when, when doing those exercises like she does, you can put the eccentric load much higher than the concentric, which is a, you know, which is a great way to work on core stabilization because not only do you pull against it using your strength, but then in resisting as it pulls you back and stabilizing. Uh, we've seen this used very successfully in industrial applications. Um, company you've probably heard of, Harley Davidson Motorcycles, uh, manufactured in the US, and I think they've got a you know, plant in Europe. Um, but they have several plants and they have a physio clinic where they do um, training with their new workers to help prevent injuries as well as rehab them if they have an injury. And that ability to be creative, as Heather has shown, in duplicating real life tasks, doing the things that they do on the production line, uh, setting up things like uh, heavy duty torque wrenches, that when you use those and it tightens up a bolt and it gets to the end of its travel, the torque wrench wants to kick back at you. So you need good core stabilization so that you're not, you're not being injured or being strained or developing, you know, cumulative trauma disorders. Um, so having those kind of uh, setups it has been very beneficial across the boards, uh, as Heather said, from stroke patients up to high performance athletes and everybody in between. And, you know, we do see clinics um, using that. Patients like it. Uh, I worked in a clinic myself before coming to work for BTE, and I know the patients liked using the machine because they liked the realism of interacting with the uh, physio and then doing exercises that match whatever their daily routine is to hit those specific muscle groups and work in the, t the total kinetic chain. So you're not focusing just on the injured joint, but as Heather said, you're bringing everything back into balance because when you're injured and you're, you're not active for weeks or months, you start to develop atrophy across the body. So it's very difficult to go from an injury back to normal performance if you focus only on that injured joint. So, um, you know, clinics use this to simulate multiple tasks and the patients like it and they like the feedback. They like the percentage of improvement that pops up on the screen as they do each exercise session. So um, yeah, it, it's been helpful in, in many different applications. Yeah, no, that's, that's really comprehensive, that's good. So Heather, going back to the start, I had a question talking about how you actually came across the Primus and why you picked that as a device. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I, 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 I started with a patient actually that had a post back surgery patient that um, was desperate. She was with five, literally every single day post surgery with five different practitioners, a bio, physio, chiropractor and myself. And eventually there were so many disciplines all trying to say they were the best. This, I'm going back about 10 years now. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's quantify it. And I, I took basically the McGill court McGill studies court test copied really the data this was going back about yeah 10 years or so and I set her a task and within 16 weeks of quantifying her exercises we had her back in a gym with with no one and I realized the impact of getting a patient back with measures and I was in the deepest darkest Africa at that point <laughs> and was was really needing to find a way. And I literally, it was through the internet and I researched, researched, researched and eventually found it. I think um, I wrote to be, I must've written to be BTE about 10 times before they answered me to believe that I really did want to get one. 
but basically it was through research on the internet and trying to find a way. I looked at the Cybex at that time, but what a lot of those machine um, machines at the time, 10 years ago were doing were, were very fixed plane seated non-weight bearing. The reason I chose the Primus is the versatility of functional application that I could actually literally fit a cricket ball on and have somebody looking at a ligament that's doing a leg spin. I can simulate something as small as a leg spin down to there's 50 different tools you can fit on to simulate task. And that's why I really chose the Primus because it's so functional, beyond functional compared to many other devices. And so when you installed it then, was that but the, the thing that you built your business around then, the Primus? Were you already going or when you brought that in, did, did that change the way that you were working? Um, it, I was looking at the time for a very specific interest in sport because obviously I was working at quite with a sports doctor. But what I realized over the years is there's no money in sport <laughs> initially, <laughs> you know, you know, and I was obviously stuck with quite a, it felt like an expensive machine at the time. And I had to invent ways and protocols. And what I realized, the more disciplines I could integrate, the better. So I wasn't in a, an operating clinic. I started from scratch. I actually moved countries, um, set up a brand new clinic and started from the beginning with it and built it as I went. So um, no, I, I invented it as I went. <laughs> I had no, no experience. Um, and, and definitely the results were within three years, you know, I'd managed to pay it off. Yeah. And so how do you think you did that then from a marketing perspective? How did you start doing that? Um, I, I think it was really the, the integration of looking at um, working quite closely. It, it took me a, a big, probably about a year to convince the physiotherapists um, that, you know, it was not a non-threatening tool that we could actually work together. So possibly by actually working in an integrated multidiscipline setup where I got the OTs involved. And what I started to do is rather than letting the disciplines prescript or prescribe, I would bring the patient in, obviously, because at that point I had multidiscipline practitioners, ask, do an assessment of what their needs were and then prescribe prescribe the practitioners to, to the patient rather than the discipline dictates the t time. And we used the primers as the baseline in the first session to dictate what they needed um, in terms of the occupational therapy or physiotherapy, or if they were just weekend warriors needing, um, you know, posture enhancement, it would dictate how we, how we would do it. So we used the primers as a, a, a screening just to apply different disciplines because most of the time people didn't really know what they wanted. So you kind of had to guide them a little bit with that. And that's how we used, that's why the screening, the four muscle group screening came up because then it would allow if there was pain, we could um, put, send them to the physio. If it was a stroke patient with, um, you know, wanting to do um, gait training or hand therapy, we could, we could combine a bit of the physio and a bit of the occupational therapy and down to my, my lifestyle team, because what I worked out too, if I would prescribe half an hour of Thai yoga before, you know, and get the Thai th therapist to detone, 50% um, of the OT's work was done by the time they got to focus on the therapy. So I started to blend different therapies um, or had the liberty in Africa to blend different therapies to suit the, the patient. And questions come through about data interpretation then. So you created your own graphs. Now, do you use that both for the patient, which you mentioned, but also in terms of any referral sources? So if doctors were referring into you, did they want to see that data? Well, what was really interesting, I was working at the time for quite a high performance doctor. And I remember the first time printing off the VTE report and the doctor, the, the sports doctor actually said to me, that's way too complicated. It doesn't mean anything. And that's really where I realized, oh gosh, I have to find, you know, most people understand traffic lights. Let me just interpret that. So even to the top sports doctor, just having the color, they don't have time. You know, they just want something that they can read fast, quick, and that's practical. They can see straight away, okay, there's an endurance issue here. That number's improved and how, how's it going to 
affect my my treatment that day so but i also had it i went down to sending it to gps who didn't want to store seven pages of a report either so i had to try and condense it and and find ways that um that doctors would hear the data the, the data that i that i um um had and it, it still seems a little bit of an issue even here in, in the uk i'm finding i have to make it practical um, the bar graphs work really quick, quick, quick because it's a, a flash, a, you know, a snapshot at what can happen. And um, I, I, I've, I've used the same data for, you know, the cl clinicians and for, for the patients. The, the, the clinicians tend to like the bar graphs and, and, and the data spreadsheets, whereas the, the patient just wants the color coding. So I kind of do both now. Okay, and also you mentioned there about that, the uh, isokinetic dynamometers. John, what's your experience of the, the isokinetics of Biodex, Cybex, those things in comparison to BTE? What's, what's the shift been like, if anything, in the States? Well, in the States, it's really shifted away from isokinetics because, as Heather said, it really is uh, down to isolated movements where you're doing just knee flexion or extension and those other devices don't really provide you the opportunity to go from isolation to integration. And that's the nice thing with the Primus is you can do that isolated so you can quantify, but then you get people on their feet where they're load bearing and they're pushing, pulling, reaching, stretching, and they're working against the resistance. And isokinetics is just not natural. You have to learn how to use it because it is speed controlled. And it's up to the uh, patient to understand to push as hard as they can. The machine is controlling the speed of movement and they can overdo it. There have been studies that have shown that people can strain themselves isokinetically because they're athletes, they're highly motivated, they want to get back to the playing. And you know, there are incidences of, of turning strained hamstrings into, into torn hamstrings or torn tendons. Uh, whereas with the primus, it's isotonic and it's natural movement. The clinician controls how much resistance they're gonna let the patient apply. And the patient moves as fast or as slow as they're capable of. So they can learn quick reaction. So an athlete who's a throwing athlete, he has to have quick motion and he needs to be able to move at his natural speed. And there's no speed limit on the primus. Naturally, you start off controlled smooth motion, motion. you go through the neuromuscular re-education, uh, as Heather said, with the, with the CPM and with setting targets. Um, gaining strength is not all about brute force. It's about recruiting additional muscle fiber and collateral muscle. So by having some control in the force output that you make the patient try to control and hit certain targets, their body learns to recruit additional muscle fiber and collateral muscle. And they can do more repetitions, lighter loads, but you get good strengthening through that repetition and that controlled movement. So in the US, we don't see very many sales anymore of the Biodex or the Cybex or those isokinetic type machines. And Primus has been around for over 25 years and is still going strong very successfully. Good, no glad to hear it. So, Heather, what would your advice be for a clinic or team or any sort of environment if they were looking at adopting this, uh, the Primus, and any sort of functional testing? What would your what would your advice to them be? Well, I I think the biggest fear from what from what I what I see is is how do you integrate? Like how how, how do you charge out costings? How do you merge the 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 price and the protocols basically so um and then i think that's really what i've been looking at and what um i've been trying to strategize to help um look at how technology you know i'm very passionate about bringing technology into to the evolution of protocols and to actually start thinking out the box that it is easier than you think so my advice is to to buy one, <laughs> there's like nothing. There's nothing stopping you, um, you know. And so often you're dictated by the the institution or the practice that you're working from. But it's actually easier than you think, and um, and and 
my, my advice would be it's not, you know, there are simple ways of doing it, very simple ways of, of integrating it, integrating them. Yeah, no, thanks for that. So I interviewed a, a user who works in the NHS this week, and she's equally as passionate as you, Heather, and she's been working. She's one of the few that's done a great job. We've got over 50 promises in the NHS. But she's done a great job for income generation. So she's working with another very well-known manufacturer, John, um, and doing an amazing job of screening for them, generating a lot of money, which is great for the hospital. And, you know, she's similar attitude to you, Heather, where she said that, knowing what she knows now she doesn't know why she didn't do it sooner yeah and i think there's always been a big focus people think it's only on testing it's literally in six sessions you can you can build muscle and you particularly i mean one of my big passions was in stroke rehabilitation that i, I and, and certainly hip replacements that i could actually get someone off a walking you know a stick post-surgery within three weeks i mean it was it was stand it was because you can build muscle and 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 con and have the facility, the training is often overlooked. Because I think previously you just want numbers as a, as a baseline, but there's such value in using baseline objective screening and carrying it through into the treatment. That's often where it's overlooked, and that's what what the primus is so unbelievable with. Because each measure at the start of each session dictates the forces that you're going to be put through the training. So you're training by numbers. It's like having a, a, a gauge for tire pressures on a car. You know exactly how much you put in, what load, what quantity, what prescription, and you bespoking prescribe prescription of exercises, which is not often looked at. It's like, just get on with these exercises, they'll work. But what's the quality? What's the quantity? What's the amount? Is it strength? Is it power? It's endurance. And this can be determined in a flash shot from one training session. John, people, anything you'd up to that? Yeah, people perform best in the manner in which they're trained. So when you're trying to retrain an athlete for his sport, you want him practicing that sport. And of course, at first, it's got to be at low levels. But with a device like the Primus, you can simulate those motions. You can add resistance, but they can still do their natural movement. We In the, in the U.S., we have professional baseball teams and professional football teams, as well as university training rooms that use the primus so they can do those many functional tasks and you know you asked before about isokinetics it's very interesting that with some of these they do have a kind of an isokinetic mindset thinking that's a better way to train but when we show them the primus and we say here's your isokinetic mode which the primus does have here's your isotonic mode Rarely do they ever go back to using the isokinetics once they feel, you know, the resistance of isotonics and that pure natural motion that you can do to retrain a worker to practice his job, an athlete to practice their sport, or just, again, a, a senior citizen to be able to do their self-care skills and lift groceries and, you know, move about the kitchen and, and lift their grandchildren. You're doing those integrated tasks. Um, that people learn proper body mechanics. You, know, you do certainly have injuries that are so significant that people don't regain 100% of their pre-injury strength. So you have to teach them how to work smarter, how to move smarter, how to use good body mechanics to compensate in a way that's not going to aggravate their injury, but still allows them to get back to doing their desired tasks. So those integrated tasks go a long way in, in bringing people back to recovery, even if not back to 100% strength. But 100% functionality is probably the, the way to look at it. Great. So we're coming to the end of this now. Are there any closing things that you think that people should take away from this session, Heather? Um, I, I, yeah, I think, I think it's to just, when you go to your protocols, not be totally caught up in, 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 in what you've been taught as it's just be a little bit open-minded that, that technology is advancing, protocols advancing, and there is space for, for, for expansion and integration. I think definitely looking at that, the, the multidiscipline approach to treating the body um, all the way. And I'm not only saying just with physical therapy, but something simple like, you know, in, from my experience, um, 
having making sure the core can fire because the digestive tracts um, not in spasm, the core can't fire. So looking at the holistic approach and not only just being focused on, you know, just treating the injury because re re reoccurring injury always happens. So um, using, going back to the topic today, using data and baselines is, is such a great way to try and include that somehow in, in, in your practice and objectively find a way to to help the patient understand get the buy-in to what you're doing in terms of, of of how you're treating them right john anything you'd like to add to that uh, again i think you know the summary is the the functionality um the whole core and the whole functional task of retraining people to do what they did before they were injured um, I think that was, you know, demonstrates it uh, quite well with some of those creative ways that she has used the machine. And it's not hard to do patients. Uh, when I worked in a clinic, uh, I had patients put the tools on themselves and do the next exercise. Uh, got them more actively engaged. Um, they like computers. They can push the button on the screen that says next exercise. The setup is there. And I could stand back and coach them and make them learn how to do these motions on their own without me always positioning them because then you do get a better transition from the clinic when they've had to think about it and they've had to go through the movement unassisted just working with the machine and then when they go back to their job or back to their sport they're going to stop and they're going to think and they're going to remember that better than if somebody is always doing it for them so it's part of the reasons patients like the machine and they like the results they like the feedback Great. No, that's it. Well, I think from our perspective, we're really keen. We're really passionate about BTE. I've worked with the company, so both the company and the products. We've worked with them for a long time. Great organization to work with. And we're really keen to support people that are interested in this. We know that money is always a barrier for these things, but I think working with Heather and her organization, that's going to really help people integrate this and um, be able to offer the best clinical outcomes, which is what we're all fundamentally in this for anyway. So um, it's quite an exciting opportunity. So I would like to thank John. Thank you for joining us. Always good to see you. My pleasure. Yeah, and Heather, thank you very much for your presentation. And what I'd like to bring everyone's attention to is we've got another session which is on the Primus, which is being run by Phil Heritage from the AECC University College in Bournemouth. They've been using the Primus there for many years. Um, and that session's on the 7th of December at 2.30 until 3.30 UK time. And it's on the use of the Primus for neuromuscular control training in a specialist sporting context. And I think that's going to go more into the CPM with target force that we mentioned earlier on. So that'll be a really interesting topic. We'd really love to see you all there for that one. So thank you again to Heather. Thank you to John. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you to everything, everyone from Physiquip. And we will see you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Bye now. Bye-bye.